basically he him and his girlfriend buried the kid in the backyard. Hey man, I hope that is true. It's not his kid, it's one of her kids. He, what he told me was he came home, um, his girlfriend called him, he, he rushed home, and then, like, I think the little boy was, like, four or five. And mind you, I've only seen these kids, like, one time, so I couldn't tell you who they are, what it is about. On that fateful December day, Cleveland, Ohio, stood as the backdrop for a gripping mystery. Cleveland police received a call from Pakistan on December 18th, 2017. The caller, Scott Rodriguez, told them about a horrific crime committed by his brother, Christopher Rodriguez. After the call, the police reached Christopher's house, which he shared with his girlfriend, Larissa. She, along with her boyfriend, was accused of burying her five-year-old son, Jordan, in her backyard. This is Larissa Rodriguez. Well, we got a call uh, wanting us to check on the, on the uh, well-being of the uh, five, four to five-year-old. Her children were not all right. In fact, when the police reached her house, it was infested with cockroaches. The living condition was so poor that one of her four children, still living with her, was found eating a sandroach with a cockroach in it. And she's right there. Rodriguez and his girlfriend, Larissa Rodriguez. Let me know. Fine. All right. Hello, kids. <laughs> all right. It's, it's like four in that room up there. When asked about Jordan, she had an answer ready. That's what she had been telling the family for months. Oh, Jordan? Yes, I do. How old is Jordan? Jordan, he is just turned five. Where's Jordan at? He's with his dad. He's visiting, going to be visiting for the holiday. He's not here with us right now, right now. She did not even know the last name of Jordan's father nor did she know a way to get in contact with him. She claimed that he had recently changed his number, and Jordan's aunt had picked him up in August for their usual yearly vacation. It was not looking good for Larissa. On the same day, all four kids were removed from the house and placed in the county's care, and Larissa was taken into custody. You do have a right to remain silent. That's exactly what Larissa Rodriguez did. Stay silent for months. Um, I am going to re-advise you your rights. You do have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, we'll be appointed for you. Do you still understand your rights? Yes, I do. After her rights were read to her, it did not take long for her to admit to the crime. She told the police that after her five-year-old son Jordan died on September 21, 2017 due to carelessness and physical injuries, Larissa and Christopher buried him in the backyard the next day. It was Christopher's idea to, to, to bury your son in the backyard? It was my idea, and he just did it. Just because I didn't want Jordan to be far away from me. I just wanted him to be close. I was not ready to let Jordan go. Look at how Larissa is detailing this without remorse. It seems as if she feels she has done a good job. She seems to think that she's a great mom for not letting Jordan be away from her. When the detectives pointed it out, she reacted. You think I don't feel guilty for that? I think You think I don't? I do, okay? Sure. And you're making shit worse. After that, she told the detectives where to find Jordan's body. On December 19th, 2017, FBI agents in white suits began digging in the backyard of her house at about 2.30 p.m. and found human remains. This is the interrogation that followed. Okay. Take a look at her carefree body language. Some things have changed overnight. We did a lot more work on this. Um, we just have a few questions. At the, when this all happened, did you have a cell phone back then? Now, notice how she answers non-incriminating questions. It is important to establish her basic body language to figure out her psychology. When this all happened, mm -hmm. yeah. I just can't remember what number I had. What kind of phone was it? I had a, it was the same one as my daughter, the Samsung Galaxy on 5. What color is it? Silver and black. Okay. Okay. Uh, when I tell you some things have changed is we did talk with the coroner. Okay. And they finished their initial examination. And there are some problems. This is unusual, but she has the same carefree demeanor when answering questions about her son. In a way, she has believed herself to be more of a victim in this situation. Like, the problems being, Jordan had 
an old left wrist fracture. His left wrist was broken at some point and it was healed. It healed on its own. How? That's something you need to tell us. Jordan also has three fractured left ribs that healed on their own and a fractured right rib that healed on its own. And these are all injuries that were healing on their own without medical help, which means he was in a lot of pain for a very long time. Not only was this boy in absolute pain, but he couldn't even voice his pain to his parents. He could not speak and had special needs. It was probably why Larissa's boyfriend, Christopher, who was in Medina County Jail for child support charges, did not show any mercy on him. And you're not being honest about what was happening to this kid. See, when what happened, I mean, I personally didn't, but I was scared of myself, okay? Scared of? I was scared of what? That I was just going to have all of them took him from me, but I still love them. He's my kid. I think talking to my sisters yesterday actually opened up my eyes a little bit and made me realize I should not be the only one taking full blame for this. Larissa's sister, Anna, once found Jordan tied up with a sock in his mouth. She said Jordan was last seen alive by her family on July 17, 2017. She revealed that by the end of the month, on July 31, 2017, Larissa told the family that Jordan was half dead in a closet. Life was not easy for little Jordan, but he faced a fate much worse at the hands of his own remorseless mother. You know, sometimes I need to be more rough on them, but that's just not in me. The female interrogator attempted to appeal to Larissa's emotions and pretended to show her empathy to make her talk more. To see her in... I don't want to be that mother either. In about 10 seconds, you'll see Larissa trying to fake her emotions, but she fails miserably. She starts crying, but her voice changes back to normal almost immediately. I, I just I, don't want to be that mother either. Right, I don't. I mean, I was like that right. when I was little. I can't be that type of mom to sit there and expect you, okay, my kid may do something wrong, but I see other discipline, you know, timeouts, you know, corner, you know, bedroom, you know, sometimes my help me girl worker even seen that herself. You know, no matter how bad my little ones connect up, I never had that in me to hit my kids. But I think I was just so scared because I used to get my by Chris just because I defended my kids. My daughter, my oldest daughter, my oldest son can tell you, my older son had a pull knife on him because he put his hands on me the way he did. How long were you and Chris together? About two years. Okay. And he was living with you from day one? Yeah. All right. Our understanding is that you were dating someone else who moved out and you met Chris online? I was with Jake. Okay. But Jake wasn't in the house for more than two weeks. Right. Since when and he I left and then Chris came in. Right. And you met him online? Yes. Meanwhile, Jake, or Jacob Wagner, Larissa's ex-boyfriend and father of one of her children, was being interrogated by another detective. He's with Larissa, refusing to let me see my daughter, raising her as her own. Uh, he's got a temper, um, a marijuana problem. Um, I'm not sure if he's on pills or anything, um, or any other heavy drug. Um, I know, um, from what Anna told me, because Anna was living with her there for a little bit, and she was sending me pictures of my daughter, because I wasn't allowed to see her. So Anna would take, you know, pictures with her, and, uh, Tatiana sent them to me. Um, she told me that Chris gets angry when he's not smoking marijuana. starts, you know, just gets ballistic. Um, other than that, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't been in a house since I've left Larissa. Um. Okay, so just before I left the room to start the recording equipment, you began telling me that you began your relationship with Larissa in January of 2014. You said it was good for three to four months. Yes. At that time, she has Mariana, Milton, Anthony, and Jordan, she's in a custody battle for Nevaeh. Correct. And then she gets pregnant with your daughter. Yes. Larissa had nine kids, all with different fathers. 
It is also important to notice Jacob's body language, which is very different from Larissa's. There is no hard and fast rule, but lying takes more effort. Plus, there are multiple ways you could get caught for lying too much. Therefore, it's generally a good sign when someone gives a lot of details, as in Jacob's case. A cousin named Julio? Yeah, a supposed cousin named Julio. Um, what made me not believe that's your cousin is because um, uh, me and her were going through a really hard time. We were arguing back and forth. She's accusing me of cheating out of nowhere. Um, just calling my bosses, telling them I'm a drug addict and stuff. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, I used her phone and and the text messages was text messages from him, several text messages were going back and forth with each other. Julio, you mean? Yes, uh, going back and forth with Julio. This is when uh, my first year with her. Um, I knew she was pregnant with Tatiana. Um, she moved him in, and um, he just got out of prison not that long ago. I can't remember for what, though. If I could interject, yes. um, so what I see happening is like, I think March of 2016, you were going through the process of trying to enroll Jordan in a class that's specific for him. And, and But is it Chris that doesn't want him to do this? Or is, um, because... What I'm reading... I, no, I did try to get him enrolled in school and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Because um, what I read was, Jordan would have benefited from an environment with children like him. He's, he is autistic, most probably. Yes. yes. Now, in Larissa's case, her body language is more restricted. She doesn't move much when the detectives start asking the question. But as she starts answering and notices that she's getting support from the officers, especially the female interrogator, she starts using her hands more to make it sound more convincing. I was doing what I can, you know, and if you notice, none of my kids or nothing ever went through this, and so I got with Chris. I know. That's why, listen, Nana, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm a mother and you're a mother. And my, and sister, I know you're my sisters made me realize that, you know, like... Mm -hmm. Listen, I know you... You had a horrible upbringing. That's terrible. I know. Police records show that Rodriguez had a history of violence as both a victim and a suspect. She has been connected to various incidents, including a missing persons case, assault and domestic violence. When she was 15, her parents allowed her to live with her then-boyfriend, who attacked her in December 1998. Her parents refused to allow her back into their home and to provide care and support her. According to Anna, Larissa's sister, their mother was attacked in July 2007 by her then-boyfriend, Juan Mateo, because she had flirted with another man during a party. Bloodied, she stumbled to a nearby pharmacy, collapsed, and died. It, ever it, since day one, ever since everything happened, I just, I wanted to reach out. I wanted to tell somebody. I wanted to, the day it happened, the first person I wanted to talk to was my counselor. I wanted to tell her what happened just because I was just so scared. I needed somebody to confide in. Okay. And I, do, I don't have that support. When you say the day that it happened, do you mean? The, the same day? exact day. That, September 21st? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I needed somebody to talk to. And in my heart, something told me that he did something to my son. You have to make a coffee here if you want something. Okay, thank you. In my heart, I just knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just knew it. Like, you know, okay, if he can hit on me, and he can discipline my other kids, but he wouldn't discipline them like he did Jordan. Mm -hmm. How did how does he discipline Jordan? It was just different. I mean, as far as you know how you said the sock in the mouth, none of my kids got the sock in the mouth, only Jordan. And I used to sit there and tell him, don't do that. You know, I used to get yelled at. My kids all can tell you I defended all my kids. And that's where a lot of me and his arguments came in because I did defend my kids. 
and that's where he would put his hands on me. He even put a sock in my mouth. When I tried to yell for help, I felt like I was stuck. And every time something like that would happen, he would always bring up and make me feel like guilty, like I was the one who did that to Jordan. And I didn't hurt Jordan. Jordan died on September 21st, 2017, and Christopher helped Larissa bury him in the backyard on September 22nd. Almost a month later, on October 15th, Christopher confided in his brother, Scott, and told him the details about the crime. Just the next day, on October 16th, Christopher was arrested on unrelated child support charges. Larissa mentioned her instincts as a mother, trying to take action on the day that Jordan died, but not once did she highlight the struggles of her son. Instead, she swiftly moved on to self-victimize as a tactic to make herself sound authentic to the interrogators. I was in and out, in and out, in and out, living out of my car. Um, I remember one time I walked I walked in because uh, me and her sorted things out over the phone. You know, I went to the store, picked up some food for him. I walked in and uh, she was trying to potty train Jordan. And she, she was calling him a retard. So what, let me just say this, we've seen pictures up until Christopher Rodriguez comes in the picture. He's a healthy child. he was child. healthy. He was healthy. However, for whatever reason, he focused on that child. I don't know what that reason was. If it and was he because, tried to keep everybody away from me. I yes. couldn't have friends. I couldn't have family. I couldn't have nobody. I, I may have missed this. Did he actually physically abuse him? Did you see him? A few times that I've seen, yes. Okay. And what, uh, what did he do? He would smack him. He would, I mean, I didn't, me personally, didn't see him fracture anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't, wasn't around or if I went to the store or if I, you know, went out with my kids so or you something. you won't see a fracture. I well, didn't. You won't. I, unless, that's why it shocked me because it's a compound fracture. Right. Because I, my son had a fracture when he jumped off the uh, bicycle. He was on the bike with my older son. So I know, you know, like I took him to hospital for that fracture. Like, but a rib fracture. You but don't I. See that. But see, I wish I would. You know, it was just like Jordan trying to tell me something. When I told you that he, when he finally took his last breath, it was like he was mad. You know, like I seen in his face, like he just wanted to tell me something. But I just didn't know what that something was. And with him being speechless, I mean, I couldn't understand what it was. But I could tell it was just something so mad, you know, like angry. And I thought he, you know, like he was trying to cuss me out or something. But I, I took it as he was just trying to tell me, Mom, I love you. I got to go, you know. <laughs> Jacob had mentioned in his interview that she was a control freak. Take a look at how stiff Larissa looked when the female detective talked about the pictures that they had seen. This stiffness is caused by anxiousness, but as soon as she understands the direction of the conversation, her head nodding portrays her control and getting the power back. But in my heart, something told me that he had something to do with this because Every time after this happened, I just hated him. I hated everything. I hated it. I just couldn't stand to be around him. Did you ever ask him to leave? With the help of recorded calls between Larissa and Christopher from the Medina County Jail, we can easily figure out that her claims weren't remotely true. Not only did she lie that she hated him and could not be around him, but she also faked her emotions, which accounts for clear signs of manipulation. I love you. Yeah, I hear you, baby. Yeah. Oh. Love you. Love you. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Okay, I love you. We're asking to leave. I did, and he told me that if I was to call the cops, that he had the gas in his name, that they would tell me that he resides there, that he can't leave.
So I just felt like I was trapped. And I even told him, this is my house. You have to go. But then he always threw up. Well, if he leaves, he's calling the cops and he's blaming everything on me. Which I didn't hurt Jordan. I did. I take the fault for not taking him to the doctor. Yes, that was my fault. Notice how the detectives exchanged a few words to each other in between, but Larissa didn't break her flow. It was as if nothing else matters more than her own issues. And my uh, my other fault was doing. Tissues, right? Bring was, tissues, right? Was given the idea to do that, but I didn't hurt Jordan. I know. It's not in my heart to hurt Jordan. I know that. Larissa and Jacob's accounts do not add up. Here's a brief clip where Jacob highlights Larissa's behavior toward her kids. We we moved into uh, 98th, and she, she just got so bad. You know, the house was always dirty. You know, I did my best. I got real close to Jordan and Avea because, you know, for some reason, those two connected the best with me, you know, um, and I felt so bad for those two. Uh, I had to stop her several times for hitting Jordan. Several times. I told her, stop, stop. There was a point she pulled a knife out on me due to it. Um, Nevaeh, I was happy in a way to see Nevaeh go. I was sad because I felt like I was losing my best friend, you know. Um, but... That poor little girl, you know, she was always just, she would sit there and tell her bad things about her dad, you know. She she was, I don't know, probably like five or five, around five, six, Nevaeh was. She, she would just tell her bad things about her dad. Um, Jordan was a victim of physical and verbal abuse on top of neglect and carelessness. After she talked about her own struggles and the violence she faced at the hands of Christopher, the detectives had to direct her back to her son. And I admit, in my past, that's part of one of my counseling. I've had bad, bad relationships, and it's a pattern. Yeah. It's a pattern, and that was something me and my counselor was working on. And this just happened to be another one that just... Well, he might have been the worst one. Yeah. I think it was... You do know we're going to go talk to Chris. Have you talked to him at all during this time? No. Now you will hear the recorded calls between Larissa and Christopher, long after Jordan had died. It goes on to show that both Larissa and Christopher were violent towards the kids and raised them in neglect. Listening to these call recordings, it is clear that she cared for no one but herself. Okay. I was going to go back to church. Okay? Tell him shut the f*** up, man. That's all you're doing is screaming. That's why you can't... Yeah, little boy, getting on my nerves. All the I hear is him screaming as I'm trying to listen to you. That could be the reason why I can't to hear you right there. You okay? Are you mad? All right, Sophie, I love you. Please smack the f*** out of here for screaming like that. Sir, that's a call. So when we confront him with Jordan's injuries, is he going to tell us otherwise that you're the one who did it? A woman can't do it that much harder. And you know what? Anybody can tell you that. And I well, say that. That's not true. I, I mean, he's a lot stronger I understand. than I am. It is unnerving how confidently she puts away the phrase about a woman not being able to hit hard. She knows exactly which buttons to press to get away from the blame. We can easily see the changes in her demeanor as she hesitates after the female officer negated her claim. She treats Jordan appropriately? Yeah. Um, when do you leave? Uh, for good? Mm-hmm. Um, it was maybe like... About March 2016, um, but towards the towards the um, a little towards the end, she started getting really bad with Jordan. Um, In what way? 
every way. Every way. Um, so, it, so the beginning of 2016, she's... No, um, probably around the end of... Um, around the end of 15, it got really bad. Um, and he's three? You yes. just turned three? Yes. What, when you say she becomes really bad with him, what do you mean? Um, we moved into a, an apartment after Willowdale. We moved into an apartment on West 98th. Um, and it, it, it just got bad. Um, I was I kept trying to get a job. She kept ruining it for me. Um, we ended up... Uh, she, she just stopped cleaning the house. Um, the kids were always dirty. I always had to give them baths, uh, feed them. She only fed certain kids more than the others. Um, and I, I, my belief, I believe it's a race thing for some reason. Um, it was Nevea and Jordan that are always put down the most. Poor Mariana always had to watch the kids when I was gone. Mariana would call me, hey, I'm home alone with the kids. What do I do? You know, I'd come over, help her. But... So she only feeds certain kids? Um, she, like, if she bought treats and stuff, only certain kids, Nevaeh and Jordan, wouldn't get them. Um, Are they Caucasian? Yes, they're part Caucasian. Um, she's full Cuban. Um, Jordan, I know his dad's white. I'm not sure what his race is, though. Um, same with Christopher Upton. Um, but... She, so you think she's prejudiced against the Caucasian children? Yeah, it, the way it looked at it, you know, I, I hate to turn it into some sort of race thing, but, you know. Um, it was always just something with him. I mean, So he's, he's jealous? In addition yeah. to all that, he's a jealous guy? Very, very. And that's one reason why I don't have my Facebook, is because I get compliments about how pretty I am and this and this and that. And I, all I said was thank you. It was a compliment. That's what you say when somebody gives you a compliment, right? Thank yeah, you. Right. There was no conversation other than thank you. And I had to hear it. There was Male one, or female? Could be. There was one time everything was perfectly fine. He was sitting up in the room. It says that the ghost spirit in the house, the female ghost spirit that we have in our house, sat there and um, told him to look at my Facebook. Looking about on somebody in the past. Let's see if our nine o'clock can set up the other one. It was somebody in the past that we never, we never did anything. We were friends. Okay. Nothing, and I got a kid. Listen, I I have a really unique perspective into what your life is like. She goes on and on about Christopher and how the relationship affected her, totally sidelining everything about her dead son, and instead focused the conversation on herself. The next clip proves that Larissa was not the person that she wanted the detectives to see and believe. I'm so sorry. You weren't being sarcastic, you were angry. Uh, she was admitted in the emergency room uh, about for about two weeks, I want to say it was. Uh, she got out, and I go, um, Larissa, I want to go see my mom. You know, I, she kept me from my family, I couldn't see any of them. She's very control of, uh, control freak. Um, She, uh, I went to walk out. She grabbed me by the collar of my shirt, and I, I had a, a glass uh, ashtray, a Harley Davidson one. And uh, she grabbed me by the collar of my shirt because she kept blocking the front door. And she kept telling me, You gotta go, you gotta go. She just hit me and hit me and hit me. You know, that was nothing new. Um, Michelle even seen me one time with scratches on my face. I lied to her and told her it was a cat. But she, she grabbed me by the collar of my shirt when I went for the back door. Because uh, there's the front door. You can walk through the hallway past the stairs and yeah. there's the back door. Mm -hmm. She grabbed me by the, the neck of my t-shirt. Bam. Fractured my nose. There's blood everywhere on me. Um, I shoved her. I ran out the back door and 
I went to the rapid station, I went to my sister's house, and that's when I was like, enough is enough, you know, I gotta get a lawyer, I gotta get the kid out, you know, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about the other children, you know, um, I even wanted to go for custody for Jordan, but I'm not his biological dad. Um, I talked to several lawyers, they said that it's nearly impossible. Um, I called 696 kids, no one ever really did anything. It just made the whole situation worse for me. She wouldn't let me see Tatiana. While Larissa claimed that Christopher didn't let him see his family, Jacob had a different story to tell us. And how much time and what am I really looking at? Can you tell me? I can't. During the trial, Larissa's crimes shocked the entire courtroom, so much so that the judge could not hold back her emotions. So I want to say to the police, to the detectives Remington and Diaz, I certainly know that your job is very difficult. And I look at these photographs, and it's very hard. And I think you should be recognized more for the difficulty of what you do. And the same to the state and to the defense. This is equally difficult for you. And Mr. Rodriguez, this is a horror. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion. And in 22 years, I never have. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. And I don't understand, Mr. Rodriguez, why you don't want to cleanse yourself and tell the truth about what happened here. And I hope someday you do. Whatever this child's life was supposed to be, you make sure it didn't happen. You and Larissa, I look at friends and family, people who are desperate to have children and want to have families, and you two have babies with no consideration. You just keep having them, having them, disregarding the value of their life, disregarding their purpose in life, like they're less than an object, no regard. I didn't even hear you say you were sorry. I will not accept the recommendation for Mr. Rodriguez. These crimes are horrific. There's no question in my mind that this child was abused. It's clear that you did everything you could, you and Larissa, to hide evidence to protect yourselves. You had every opportunity at so many points to make a difference to get help, to stop beating somebody, to call the police, to ask for help, to try to take him to the hospital. I have to imagine that at some point you got in the internet and said, how do I bury a body? Because this is unbelievable to me. The level of meticulousness that you went through to not be discovered, I honestly don't know how you live with yourself. I don't know how either one of you live with yourself. The court imposed a sentence as follows. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, felony of the first degree, 11 years in prison. Count two, felony of the second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison. Count three, felony of the third degree, I'm sorry, felony of the second degree, six years in prison. Count five, abuse of a corpse, felony of the fifth degree, nine months in prison. Counts one, two, and three to be served consecutive to each other and concurrent to the sentence imposed in count five for a total sentence of 25 years. The sentence is to be served concurrent to the sentence previously imposed in 625-508 for a total sentence of 25 years. Your sentence is follows. Count one, involuntary manslaughter, 11 years in prison. Count two, felony of the second degree, felonious assault, eight years in prison. Count three, felony of the second degree, eight years in prison. Count five, abuse of a corpse, one year in prison, all counts to be served consecutive to each other with credit for any time served. That's a total sentence of 28 years. That's the maximum sentence available. Local people organized a wake to remember Jordan and his life as an adorable child.
No matter what the different stories are, Jordan was in pain and he was mercilessly killed while his own mother forgot to take Ma, I just wanted to let you know that I still love you, but I want you to tell me the truth and what really happened. Tell me the truth. I'm your oldest son. You never lied to me. I don't know why you would lie. And I just wanted to tell you I love you and I'm a good justice for Jordan. He's my little brother. You're my mother, but I have to do what I have to do. We're bound to get justice for Jordan. This is what this all boils down to. At the end of the day, it's for Jordan. But Larissa, I love you. To bless this family in the name of Jesus. Who do you think was responsible for Jordan's injuries? Larissa or Christopher? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.